first day of spring is just five days away, and that means that we will all be starting to spend more time outdoors, especially with our pets. Yeah, but spring can be a dangerous time actually for our pets if we're not careful. So we asked our favorite vet, Dr. Mike Hutchinson from Animal General in Cranberry, to join us today to talk about some of those dangers. Hi, Dr. Mike. Hi, how are you doing? We're doing great. And so we want to talk first about ticks, right? Because there are a couple different kinds to be aware of. Uh, and this is a true concern right around springtime. Yeah, they're out in full force now because it's been warm out. So I always mm -hmm. said, even during the winter, once you get over 32 degrees, the ticks are out. So every day in the practice, we're seeing ticks. So year, year round flea and tick protection, always recommend that. I use next card on my dogs. I use frontline gold on my cats. And uh, speak to your veterinarian. There's a lot of products out there that work, but you want to have control for your pets because it's a nightmare. They're disease carrying experts. Lyme disease, ehrlichiosis, anaplasmosis, babesiosis, you name it, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, ticks can give it to you. you so know, we want to kill them. I, I am always curious about the weather patterns and if that does more to, to kill them off before we get into the, the true height of this. So we've seen kind of this up and down fluctuation this spring so far. Does that mean that it's going to be a worse tick season, a better tick season? They're predicting a bad tick season, and it's because we had a snow covering. If we had tundra weather and it was 20 degrees out for three weeks, a lot of ticks would get killed. But unfortunately, we get snow that insulates them, and they get under the leaves. We have a lot of leaves because we have deciduous forests, and so these ticks are survivors. And this year, they're predicting a horrible year yet again. So you want to be aware, and for us as well, there's a new tick. So everybody knows the deer tick. That's the most popular right now, the, the black-legged tick. But there's a new tick that's coming up from the southeast called the Lone Star tick. And that is the one that can spread a meat allergy, if you can imagine. Wow. We can get bit by this Lone Star tick, and it gives us a sugar molecule that can make us allergic to red meat, all red meat, pork, venison, beef, whatever. And uh, it's a nightmare. So... We want to do our best to keep ticks off of us and off of our pets. Wow, really yeah. interesting. I've heard about the Lone Star tick too, and it's kind of mind boggling that yeah. a tick would affect your ability to want to eat meat. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mike, like, if, you're, if you have an indoor dog or an indoor cat, do you still need to protect them from ticks? If you're thinking they're not going outside, but could, could something come inside and still get them? Well, it's. Unlikely, less likely if they're indoors, but remember there's fleas as well, and fleas are disease-carrying experts too. We don't have a lot of fleas right now, but we will in another month or so. And and so you and I can bring in fleas. They, 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 you know, they have a carbon dioxide receptor on them. They jump on us, they realize we're not the host, they jump off of us. Well, now we're inside, and guess what they find? They find our pets. Mm. Every year we see cat owners that never let their cats out with flea infestations, and they don't understand it, but that's how it starts. So remember, one flea or 10 fleas can lay 200,000 eggs in a matter of a month. You're going to have tons Ooh. of fleas. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mike, you mentioned talking to your vet about the different products out there to prevent flea and tick issues. Um, but th we, we did see not too long ago some dangers about flea collars and tick collars. Yeah, I'm not a fan. There's a collar out there that's real popular online. It's, you don't re it doesn't require a prescription. It's not FDA approved. It's a pesticide, so the EPA has the approval process there. And it's caused some harm in dogs and, and, uh, and, and people, too. So I, I've never been a big fan of collars because we pet them on the neck. We hug them. You know, we get that poison. It, it, it applies by friction, and that's what's supposed to kill the fleas and ticks. I'm not a fan of collars. There's been a lot of reports of the EPA that's been reported widely about um, up to 1,700 dog deaths. Wow. But I don't know if they're off from that Seresto collar, but still, I'm not a fan of collars. I don't recommend them. I recommend the monthly chew for dogs and, uh, and then the flea application for the cats. Good to know. All right. As always, you have educated us. We appreciate it, Dr. Mike. It's always my pleasure. All right. Dr. Mike Hutchinson from Animal General in Cranberry, thank you as always for keeping us and our pets safe and healthy. Great advice.